to everyone. Welcome to a new tutorial of the back for SketchUp. In this video, we're going to see how to insert the doors and cabinets that comes with the back. To start, I have to select the door tool. A window pops up, which let us modify the size of the first and second slab. In this case, I'm going to change the size of the first slab to 80 centimeters. You'll see you can also change the alineation of the door in the wall and the height of this component. I'm going to leave the rest of the parameters as they are. At all times the door is free to be inserted into any of the existing walls. So as long as it is purple, I can place it anywhere I want. As you can see, when I move the door close to the right wall, it orientates itself to open towards the right. Same thing happens when I move it to the other side. Even if I flip the door to the side of the hallway, it will keep those orientations according to its position to the main wall. I'm going to place the door inside the room and we click when it's purple to insert it. As you can see the back automatically removes the excess wall to create the opening. Now I'm going to delete this door by selecting the rubber tool of SketchUp. Pressing the ALT key with that tool will remove the door completing the wall as it was. Now I select the door tool again, but this time I'm going to leave the parameters as they appear in the window. You can notice that if I press the tab key, the anchor point of the door changes from the side of the door to the center. If the anchor point is on one side of the door, I can type, for example, 0, 0 0.25. The first zero refers to the elevation of the door from the ground not to be confused with the height of the door itself. The second parameter, which is force, inserts the door at a fixed distance away from the closest wall. I confirm by pressing enter. After this I go to the wall, and if I keep press the control key, you'll see how the door is forced at the established distance from the closest intersection. So if I move it to the other wall, it will force it in relation to that reference. When I keep the control key pressed, the door turns purple, and now I can click to insert it. We can now verify that the distance is indeed 25 centimeters. I'm going to select the door tool once again and keep the parameters as they are. I press the tab key to change the anchor point to the center of the door. After doing this, if I keep press the control key, the door will automatically position itself to the center of the wall. And now I can click to insert it. This time, I'm going to select the door tool to make a double door. To do this, I just have to type the desired measurement of each slab. In this case, I indicate a size of 72 centimeters in both slabs. Before placing the door, I'm going to change its alineation. This parameter indicates the position of the door in relation to the thickness of the wall. So if its value is 100, the door will be exterior. If it is 0, it will be interior. And if it is 50, the door will be in the middle. I type 50, so the door frames will be inserted in the middle of the thickness of the wall. I go to this wall and pressing CTRL to put it in the center and then I click to confirm the insertion. Ok, now I'm going to show you how to edit and insert the cabinets of the back. I click on the icon of the cabinet tool and this window allows me to edit the maximum size of each slab of the cabinet and the height of the component. I keep the parameters as they are and press OK. The length of the cabinet will depend on the space we want to put it in, keeping a maximum slab size of 45 cm as it was established in the window. This tool maintains all the insertion properties we have seen before with the door tool. Once the cabinets have been inserted, I select all the floor plan, make a group, 
and with the group selected, I click on the tool Convert to 3D. At first, the wall height is 4 meters, but I can change it by typing 2.6 and then enter. Now I can edit the group and see that all the doors, cabinets and windows of the back are dynamic components. Therefore, we can interact with them or even change the options of the components. We have seen again how to insert doors and cabinets in a very fast and easy way. We'll meet soon in the next tutorial. See ya!